Hello, welcome to the first episode of Meet the Menagerie, where we will be discussing millipedes. First off, let me just say thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate you all. Now, let's talk about millipedes. I'm going to be currently showcasing four of my species of millipedes for you guys today. First, I have the cherry-footed millipedes found on the bottom right. Then, there's my Florida ivory millipedes found in the middle. And, of course, we have the smoky oak millipedes on the bottom left. And last but not least, I have my Texas gold millipedes up top. Now, these four species of millipedes are considered North American millipedes because they can be found among several states in the U.S. today. They are most commonly found in heavily wooded areas or forests, especially hardwood deciduous forests. Now, a lot of you may be asking, what exactly are millipedes? Millipedes are arthropods with long segmented bodies. Now, a lot of you are going to say that didn't make much sense, right? So let me explain what arthropods are. Arthropods are a group of invertebrates that are defined by having paired jointed appendages. All arthropods have an exoskeleton and therefore go through a process called molting. Molting is when the animal outgrows its exoskeleton and is forced to break out of it. Once they break out of the old shell, they will consume it for extra nutrients. Most arthropods are exceptionally vulnerable when they're molting because it takes 24 to 48 hours for their new shell to fully harden and gain pigment, making them an easy target for other predators. So millipedes, when they go through molting, they will make a small underground chamber that provides them a safe place to molt and consume their old shedded skin so they have extra nutrients for their skeleton to reharden within 24 to 48 hours. Due to the fact that millipedes have exoskeletons, they evolved a unique way of breathing. And that unique way of breathing is through holes called sphericals along the sides of the millipede that convert humidity into oxygen. That is why all millipedes in captivity and in the wild can be found in fairly humid areas. Millipedes, spiders, scorpions, things of those natures will not be able to survive using this method. So of course anything underwater like other crustaceans like crabs and crayfish that breathe through gills and in some special cases lungs. The reason for that is is because sphericals only give you a small amount of oxygen and therefore can only support small life such as butterflies and insects, myriapods especially, centipedes and millipedes. All right, now I'm going to talk about different types of millipedes. There are several different types of millipedes out there and no, just because they're called millipedes doesn't mean they have a thousand legs. On average, even the longest species of millipedes, as a general rule, have only about 400 legs. Now, I've never counted the exact number of legs on a millipede, but I can tell you it's definitely nowhere near to a thousand. The three main types of millipedes that you're going to run into are going to be flat millipedes, round millipedes, and pill millipedes. As the name suggests, flat millipedes are usually flat in shape. Um, there are quite a few interesting species of millipedes that are flat, like feather millipedes, that are fairly small. Um, there are a lot of them that can secrete small amounts of cyanide, and there's even a species of flat millipede that is bioluminescent. There are even some that are fluorescent. Now normally the round and the pill millipedes are not bioluminescent or fluorescent, nor are all the flat species of millipedes have those capabilities. There's, I believe there's only one species of flat millipede that is bioluminescent and that is Motixia sequoiae found in California. Um, I know there is a couple of species of flat millipedes from Virginia that do fluoresce under light. Now, you may be thinking, oh, fluorescence is the same thing as bioluminescence. That is incorrect. Bioluminescence means that the animal in question creates its own light. Think of a lightning bug. It lights up due to chemical reactions in the butt that make it light up. 
Now, fluorescence, in the sense, is not the same. Fluorescence, it looks like it glows to the human eye because of the wavelength of light that hits it. Think of a scorpion when you shine a black light on it. It fluoresces bright blue or bright green, but it does not create that glow itself. The wavelength of lights and the certain color and the wavelengths of that light hitting that scorpion gives it a different color to the human eye. Now, on to the round millipedes. Like most all of the millipedes in this video, they are round millipedes. They are the most common type of millipede that you will find are round millipedes. Most all of the popular species in the hobby today are round. Most, you know, you think of like AGBs or Philippine blue millipedes or um, bumblebee or scarlet millipedes. All of the species I've mentioned in my video all are round millipedes. They're the most common, um, but that doesn't make them any less unique or special in my opinion. Pill millipedes, or the pillipede, as the name suggests, they resemble wood lice or everybody's favorite or most recalled bug growing up, roly polies. They look like oversized roly polies and that's why they're called pill millipedes is because they strongly resemble wood lice. Now, a lot of questions I get about millipedes are, are they safe to handle? Or are they dangerous? Can they kill me? One, no. Millipedes cannot kill you. They do not bite and they do not sting. They do nibble, but it just feels like somebody's gently scraping against your skin because their jaws aren't strong enough to break through the dead layer of skin that most people have. So they are pretty harmless at best. The secretions, if you stress one out enough and it secretes the toxic fluid out of its side, it's basically a deoxidizing agent that will just turn your fingers brown or yellow. It doesn't even hurt. It just discolors your fingers for a little while and it goes away. However, the only reason I could ever see a millipede being toxic to somebody is if somebody was to eat one. I would not recommend that because, yes, they can make you sick. So as long as you're not going around the backyard consuming millipedes, you'll be fine. They are perfectly harmless. Now, a lot of people ask me, so if they can't bite and they can't sting, do millipedes have any defenses to protect them from predators in the wild? The answer is yes. They have two main defense mechanisms that they use. One is simply to curl into a tight coil to protect the underbelly and their legs from predators and to become unappealing. They're not wiggling, they're not moving, they just simply ball up and hope that the predator loses interest. Now, if they curl up into a coil and the predator still persists on attacking that millipede, they will secrete a defensive liquid out of the sides of their spiracles. It usually tastes and smells bad to the predator or is slightly toxic. Some species of millipedes do have a low concentration of cyanide that they can excrete to discourage predators. But most of the time it tastes bad enough that the predators will leave the millipede alone. That is their like last line of defense. There are some millipedes in like the Philippines and, and Africa and other places of the world where there are actually um, certain animals that will benefit like lemurs and things that will actually agitate a millipede on purpose and then they will rub themselves with the secretion to keep pests like bugs, ticks, mosquitoes, things like that, they will use it as basically a bug repellent because the other mosquitoes and stuff don't like the secretions that the millipedes produce. So the lemurs will grab up those millipedes, make them secrete that fluid, and then rub it on themselves as a repellent. It's really cool. Now, I get asked a lot, what exactly do millipedes eat? What is their main diet? Due to the fact that millipedes are detritivores, is a fancy way of saying they eat decaying organic material. Their main diet consists of decaying leaf litter and rotten wood. However, they are opportunistic feeders and can be considered pests to gardens and farms because they will eat fruits and newly seeding plants if they get the opportunity. They will eat just about anything. I personally offer my millipedes 
in captivity a source of calcium because in the wild they will eat anything that's decaying including dead animals and bones because they have to get that source of calcium from somewhere and they don't always necessarily get it from leaves and rotten wood. So they do eat their own exoskeletons and other bones and things like that to get that source of calcium. And especially from other dead bugs too. They clean up everything. So they're ecologically important in terms of being a cleanup crew. Now, the last question I'm going to cover today, and it's one of the most common questions that I get asked by a lot of people is, what are the differences between a millipede and a centipede? Now, millipedes have a total of four legs per segment. They're fairly slow movers. They can secrete a foul liquid or curl into a tight ball and they are detritivores. Now, on the other hand, centipedes are carnivorous hunters that will eat anything they catch. They have two legs per segment and have a pair of modified legs in the front that is used to inject venom into its prey. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, oh, they have fangs. They don't. They're actually modified legs that act as fangs. So, centipedes are venomous, making their bites extremely painful to anybody unlucky enough to get bitten by one. Alright guys, that concludes our video for today. Thanks everyone for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Stay tuned for our next Meet the Menagerie video, where we will introduce you to Frederick the Centipede.